traffic, infrastructure, housing. Those are some of the issues that are facing the city of Goose Creek. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Goose Creek City Councilman Christopher Harmon for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Councilman Christopher Harmon, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Quentin. It's good to see you again. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. Needlessly, I interviewed you a couple of years ago when you ran for Goose Creek City Council. Now, obviously, you're back. So tell me, what's new, what's now in the city of Goose Creek? <laughs> Goose Creek's a growing place and um, lots, of, lots of desirability in our city, and, and we're proud of that. Um, just added a theater that will be opening soon, the Joseph S. Danning Amphitheater, which has its first show, its grand opening on September 6th. So we, as a city, um, it was much needed, and, and we're excited to have an opportunity to bring people together and experience entertainment um that has a seating capacity of 1200 people the first show did sell out granted the tickets were free but nonetheless they went fairly quickly um it has uh, a food truck court a eat-in pavilion area large restroom facilities that's situated by the lake at city hall to provide beautiful scenic view while you're being entertained with your family and friends so we're really excited about that um that was funded by state allocation provided by former state representative Jess Joseph S. King, uh, hence the name of the amphitheater. Yes. Um, also, some of the remaining funds from that were given from the American Rescue Plan Act. So we're just really excited to have that come to the city of Goose Creek, and uh, it will be enjoyed by many for a long time. So what, uh, with those funds that you all had, for, obviously were provided for this particular amphitheater, how much more do you have left? just in case you all want to add more exhibits or the functions there. Yeah, so we have some funds left over from that um, Rescue Plan Act. And then, of course, the city has a, a balanced budget to provide for future growth and future uh, recreational opportunities. So, you know, after the Central Creek Park that's been developed and has been liked by many and is a very popular attraction, and then um, the Veterans Park, all 52. And um, so I think we're coming together with some opportunities for our residents to get out and about and, and enjoy their time together. So we look forward to more growth and, and I think that we'll continue to have funds to do so. So how do you scroll smartly with this particular growth that's coming to the city of Goose Creek? Yes, it's a good question. So, you know, I, I think that you can't prevent this growth. If you do, you'd be wrong, I believe. So the Tri-County area is obviously growing rapidly, and it's a very popular place for many reasons. Um, Goose Creek is also rapidly expanding as that some of that Tri-County area gets a bit saturated. So we are seeing some growing pains in, in theory, but we've done a good job to manage that. Our planning department, our administration, our, our leadership, and the mayor and the council have done a great job to foresee some of this coming and, and to plan appropriately for it. I, I know that moving forward, we have to have some density that is in the city to allow some of these new residents to have places to live on our current land. We, we don't have an unlimited amount of land, so we have to use it smartly. And the urban sprawl doesn't always manage growth appropriately. So trying to encourage more density ar around the city so that we can have residents use the land as well as it can be used and also for affordability reasons it allows more access to housing and obviously that's a hot topic and and we want to make sure that we provide um access for for all demographics what are the current demographics right now when it comes to the city of goose creek uh well we we do have a large um, Hispanic and Portuguese population in Goose Creek that we've been trying to lean into. Uh, we've revitalized some of the Red Bank area and trying to encourage residents to participate with the city. Um, so we have an outreach program for the Portuguese community, the Brazilian community, community to be more specific, and the Hispanic community. They are great entrepreneurs and they provide great cultural assets to our city. And so we try to encourage their visibility and, and try to work with them from a city level and, and hold programs to encourage them to come out and learn about what we offer and um and there's been some traction with that and so we're excited and, and that red bank area is, is a focused area where there was already 
a constituent there and, and we want to grow that with the entrepreneurial culture they have to uh, participate in our economy. Now that you re well, the city's repurposed uh, Red Bank Road, uh, Councilman, how do you make that into a TIF district for the city? Um, you know, it's a good question, and I'm not an expert on the, the TIF district, but I know that it's been brought up before, and, and I think that um, we look at all avenues of possibilities to grow our city, and so if that is something that is, um, you know, if that's the best choice moving forward, I know that our administration and our council will entertain those, uh, those opportunities. So I, I think currently it's just marketing and, and having some incentives for enhancements and then also investing dollars in walkability and sidewalks. And these things, in essence, bring economic growth to a city when you have more residents out and about the businesses fare better i was reading some things before this interview and i saw um just for an example you know bikeways and trails across many regions and cities have been shown to have the major economic impact that i speak of and in the city of greenville the swamp rabbit trail in 2018 most businesses along that trail saw a 30 to 50 percent increase in sales after the trail opened um, and businesses that relocated to the trail observed a 30 to 60% increase in sales. So that's a great opportunity for businesses to grow. And it encourages us to invest in that infrastructure and work with the county and the state. And therefore, encouraging more businesses to not only become a new opportunity here, but for businesses to relocate to Goose Creek as we grow, um, we get the uh, Tension of other businesses that have already been located in the Tri County area, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking with Rob Rob Wiggins here in a couple of weeks for Quentin's close up. So hopefully we can talk more in depth about the economic development in the city of Goose Creek. Right. But let me ask you, and of course I've been I was Greenville for the first time with my family last year and enjoyed it there. But beautiful, oh yeah, great city, yeah, absolutely. And I want to actually this councilman now that you all as a city have repurposed Red Bank Road. How many more businesses do you think will come there, or and how many? older businesses will relocate from another location in, in Goose Street to right there. Right. And and so to be clear, we haven't fully revitalized that area yet. We are okay. in the beginning stage. Sure. So there's still opportunities. You know, just mm -hmm. like the sidewalks there, they can be widened. There's some right of way there that can be used to widen sidewalks, which is a safer uh transit for pedestrians. And then um and then we're always outreaching, and Wiggins has done a great job along with uh, the rest of our administration to outreach to other businesses that are in the low country when they're looking for expansion. So we've continually in communication with those businesses. So I, I don't have an exact number, but sure. there's usually always a few on the docket that we're entertaining, and then there's new ones that you know also are entertained. The, the issue is, of course, cost currently in the market. And then we don't have a lot of second generation restaurants that have existing infrastructure there. So sometimes that upfront cost can be quite high for a new business. Um, so sometimes a, a business that's expanding is a little better opportunity in the current environment. And, and Councilman, overall, when you look up, when you take a look at the city of Goose Creek from a 360 perspective, where exactly is that existing infrastructure right now? Yeah, so that is the struggle. I mean, obviously, Carnes is newly being built and, and is is definitely uh, spurring a lot of interest and has a lot of current growth. Uh, the Red Bank area, like I mentioned, is trying to be in, in a revitalization process, revitalization process. Um, the central Goose Creek area has some opportunities, but again, there's not a lot of older restaurants. We have the recent brewery that opened in the old fire station. We do. Um, encourage more restaurants to come, but we don't have a lot of the old infrastructure for people to move into. So again, Carnes is, is in the process of heavy growth. The Central Creek area, we continue to try to revitalize that and connect it. Uh, we have the Henry Brown area that's coming, and there's a small commercial place going there, but won't be a significant impact as far as commercial goes. Um, you know, and like the Red Bank, and the goal is to connect all those areas in St. James. Um, so I think in the future, we, with our population growth, we can encourage more restaurants. And once we get these new restaurants, then down the road, there will be opportunity for second generation um, restaurants or, or space to be available.
And I was just thinking about this too, Councilman, as you were just talking, but I wanted to know this. As you mentioned earlier in, the, in this particular Quentin's close up interview, you said, look, you know, we don't have that much land left in the, in the city of Goose Creek. Right. So, so where do you, exactly do you redevelop? Yeah, so annexation is important and mm. trying to expand our borders, which, you know, we have done that and will continue to do that. Sometimes there's some pushback from some of those areas that you're annexing, but ultimately we have a great planning department that will do well for the areas that are annexed. And, and so we will increase the value of the area where we annex. And I think that's to be remembered. Um, and, and so it is a game of, of trying to expand your, your, your borders. I mean, as, as funny as that, that sounds, but so we are, are in that process. When cities have rapid growth, sometimes you do saturate your existing land and um, sometimes there's infrastructure on some of your land that is unable to be retooled to the purpose that you want. So always in communication with some of the older shopping centers to see if there's any interest in a redevelopment project, which would be of great value. And we could add some height to these buildings, you know, four or five, six stories and, and add some density uh, with some mixed use capabilities. I think this is exciting and, and really adds value to your city adds great use for the, the land. Um, and then when you start connecting the sidewalks and, and our connectivity goals on our connectivity master plan into the city and even ex connecting it to other cities, like, you know, down University Boulevard and, and you go to Carnes and down 17, this really increases economic growth. And so that those are some goals of ways to use the current land we have, annex when the opportunity exists, and continue to add housing and, and commercial opportunities and parks and recreation facilities. Oh, you know what? That's a lot right there you just said. Okay, let me ask you this. And this might be off topic, Councilman. But what is the city's plan for vertical growth? Yeah, so, you know, mentioning that we are open to, to vertical growth. And, and it just is a matter of the interest of the developer to take that project on so like i mentioned some areas that we've had you know some discussions about are, are these old shopping centers off 52 in st james um the old school shopping center with the building in the back and the parking lot in the front that's not the best use of land so when you look at karn's process this is going to be kind of a, a blueprint for other areas in Goose Creek. And I think it will add interest and maybe some excitement for that new um, development process. So I personally am in, would entertain vertical growth because I think it's the best use of land. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have, um, when you have limited land, vertical is the only way to go on some level. And I don't want to overdo it and, and scare residents that we're going to build skyscrapers in Goose Creek. Obviously that's not um, a viable thing, but I think having some verticality is important to make the best use of your land. We would entertain it on some of these older shopping centers is, is just where we've had small discussions before, but there's nothing in the works to, to do that at the moment. How many old shopping centers do you all have? Actually, I don't want to use the word old, but how many existing shopping centers do you have right now in the city of Goose Creek? Right. Just thinking in the, the central Goose Creek area, there's the Berkeley Square. Um, there's the shopping center with the newly um, renovated Food Lion. Um, and then the post office shopping center. So there's probably three there in that area that, are in close proximity that could really be master planned out to be quite a nice system. I apologize for the emails coming through and dinging. Oh, no worries. Let me, uh, I know you got to run, but let me ask you two more questions. No, uh, Councilman. Uh, now, okay. With that vertical growth idea that you all have, what incentives would you draw up to actually have in investors or in developers come in and actually capitalize on that vertical growth? Yeah, that's the, the challenging, uh, part is mm. to you know you have these developers that already have their their areas leased and and so you have to be creative and that's where rob wiggins would be an expert to ask that question of of how to kind of massage that deal out and it's something where you have to have you know interest from 
the current landowner to sell the property or, or repurpose the property and also you know a, a new buyer to, to come in and put the funds up front and, and build the infrastructure and maybe it could be a, a private public partnership of some sort so it takes some creativity and it takes some time and it takes some persistence i believe and and i know that um you know rob would have good insight on that as well i know he's been working towards some of those goals so and then also flexibility from the city staff and the city administration and, and you know mayor and city council which i think all those things exist so we're in a good place with our our, our growth and demand and our, our current kind of administration and, and council mayor, I think we have the tools in place. It's just a matter of timing and, and kind of persistence and, and also, of course, being patient. None of these things happen uh, as quick as some may want them, or sometimes it happens quicker than some want them, but um, it's all a process. So you have the growth now, uh, councilman, in the city of Goose Creek. So where's that demand? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the demand is, is coming just – of course, from the growth, South Carolina is the number one growing state in the in the nation. Um, Charleston region is, is obviously very popular for many reasons. Sometimes the affordability of, of places like downtown Charleston and, and Mount Pleasant and things like that start to push people uh, away from those areas. So that is where that demand is, is, is coming from. And I think we have good schools and, and um, we have a good city government. We have low taxes. So all those things create demand. And, and then with that growth, if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, you see the opportunity that's coming. And, and so it's a good idea to position yourself in Goose Creek at this time. And when you look at, like I say, the parks and our plans for connecting the city in a more efficient manner, all these things really drive economic growth. So if there's businesses that are looking for a new place or homeowners that are looking for a new place, Goose Creek's definitely top of the list. So with all of that, you just, that, that you just said, Councilman, where is the density? Yeah. So, you know, we are creating some new density projects. We have one on Red Bank coming, just, uh, um, some mixed use projects. Uh, we have one, uh, coming on 52 near the current recreation department. Um, we have some on, uh, in Carnes, obviously there's some area that are having some density and, and so we have a lot of plans and, and, and projects on the books currently that are going to add some of this density. And as you currently Goose Creek does have a lot of neighborhoods and a lot of urban sprawl. And when you look at some of those, um, we're not opposed to those, but I think moving forward, um, mixed use developments that have, you know, apartments and townhomes, uh, some commercial opportunities within that same confines. That is the vision that we have. And, and there are projects in the works that are fulfilling those goals. So with that being said, Councilman, how do you tweak that urban sprawl plan? Yeah. So I think eventually you run out of room and the urban sprawl no longer can be a thing. Um, you know, when you look on Henry Brown, you know, those are, that is a vision of urban sprawl to me. And again, I, isn't, I'm not opposed to some of that, but I, I think that, and we do have a newer neighborhood that's going at the end of Montague Plantation, but it does incorporate some of the mixed use components and has some commercial space in the front, um, a little more townhome usage. Uh, still some individual homes with a yard, like some people still, you know, want that. But I think, I think it, one thing that helps us is we've run out of some space to, so urban sprawl and, and the neighborhood usage isn't always feasible. And now we, as we annex and when you annex a 10 or 15 acre spot, it fits better to, to put uh, some apartments or condos or townhomes with some commercial opportunities there versus it does to, you know, squeeze in 20 single family homes. So I think it's just a matter of economics and, and the developers see that the opportunity exists better for density and the city um, supports that vision. So I think it works together in that fashion. I know this might be the wrong question, Councilman. With that annexation, how many people do you want to, you know, 
have to be able to annex into the city through Spree. Yeah, I think we are uh, we are willing to, you know, as as long as our our police and fire can support it, you know, it's it's you don't want to annex so much that you're unsafe for the residents that you take in your annexation. But we would obviously plan appropriately for that. But we are not opposed to continual growth and, and working our way down 17 and um, and working our way up 52 and, and whatever opportunities exist, if we can do it appropriately and, and plan um, efficiently, I think we can allow residents to move and we can still provide the police and fire that they need and the water. And sure. um, as long as you have those basic utilities in place, then um, I, I don't think there's a risk of too much annexation. And with that annexation, where could you potentially put more recreation in the city, Goose Creek? Yeah, it's it's a good question, and we're always looking for uh, more recreation. I know soon we have you know a budget meeting coming up to discuss the future year, um, and sometimes the discussions come from there. I think we do need more green space, like vertical fields for sure soccer, uh, football type opportunities. And even to be able to host tournaments and have some sports tourism, the, the issue, of course, is cost and, and land. But I, I would like to see some more open green space for fields, some vertical space um, or vertical fields for those types of things. And then also on an alternative level is like a, a small skate park would be beneficial. I know the nearest one is down on 26. And so we have a growing population and we have people that like more than just a park or, or people that do more than just play soccer or football. So, you know, we continue to invest in our open space for our recreation department to have practice fields and game fields. I, I do think that there's the need for, for more of that in the future for something like sports tourism parks. We've done a good job with the development of parks in the recent past. Um, if you do annex more, there, there's always, opportunity for for another opportunity for a park and then something like a, a small skate park would be uh something i envision that would really entertain some of our youth and give them something to do and um maybe scare their parents a little bit in the skate park but you know it's always a fun fun sport yeah so absolutely absolutely <laughs> five ten years from now councilman how do you envision the city of Goose Creek? Man, I envision it as the best city in South Carolina. Um, and I envision it just an active community that has many places to come together and congregate and enjoy time in this beautiful weather. Uh, places to be entertained at the Danning Amphitheater. Um, commercial growth that meets the demands of our residents as far as the needs for restaurants and, and commercial facilities. And so I, I see us, you know, growing in population and having affordable living and having enough units for that growth and just places for those residents to come out to our city and really have quality of life and have connectivity and have uh, social settings that they don't have to leave the city as frequently. They can spend more of their money in our city, which allows us to grow more. It adds value to all the homeowners. Um, it continues cash flow to the city from some of those um, revenues that are pouring in. So I just see us as being a very vibrant, young, healthy city. As we continue to have affordable living, this allows more first-time home buyers to come in, which is why I mentioned young. We're not opposed to young or old or in the middle, but um, there is a issue right now with first time home buyers and having affordability and, and albeit our prices have gone up over the years, we still are considered a more affordable place to live. So that adds to more young families with children and um, it, just a really vibrant, healthy and, and happy city with lots of outdoor opportunities. What that obviously population growth counts, man, what exactly does the city of Goose Creek need as far as housing? Is it affordable housing? Is it attainable housing? Or is it workforce housing? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I think we continue to need a mix of all those things. And the affordable 
in attainable housing is something that we continue to discuss and work with developers to encourage them to have um, to bring opportunities to us for that. We also need some of the upper end housing in Goose Creek. You know, um, there's the need for more expensive homes. Once people, if people are making a large amount of money, we don't want them to have to move out of Goose Creek to find some desirable place to, to live. So I think you need from the bottom to the top, you need more units. You need more um, affordability, more attainability. We need more townhomes. Um, we need more condos. So. It, we really, it's a widespread thing, and I think we need a little bit of all. And and ultimately, we just really, as much growth as we've had, and it's it's sometimes could probably, people don't want to hear, but we, we do need more units for more supply to bring down the cost so people can have affordable housing. When there's not enough supply, obviously the price drives up and it creates difficulty with affordability and attainability. Well... I want to ask you this too, another off topic question, but how many homes in the city of Goose Creek have been built at a fairly consistent rate? Yeah, I, I don't have that number right in front of me. Um, I, I want to say there's, I don't want to misspeak, but I can't answer that question. I, I don't sure. know exactly. Sure. Sorry. Um, don't worry. <laughs> no, but let me ask you this. How many more homes do you need to keep up with this population growth in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, so, you know, that's also a good question, but, um, you know, the exact units, and I appreciate these questions because it made me go to the numbers and, and remember <laughs> this for a time, because I, I want to say we have, you know, like 12,000 okay. uh, doors, and, and I, I would imagine we need, you know, a, a couple of thousand doors for the next few years, and, and I, you know, someone like Rob or someone else could help me with sure, one of those. Sure. Those sure. questions to be no a little worries. more exact, but, um, oh. but it's a good question, and and I think from a you know detailed standpoint, uh, you know it's definitely one that we could know and we do know, and, and something we could market to developers, and and so there is a pulse on that. But I unfortunately don't have the exact numbers at, at this moment. And one last question for you, Councilman. When it comes to the city of Goose Creek, you mentioned you want to bring sports tourism there, you want to bring restaurants and all you know office commercial opportunities. What else right. do you want to a market when it comes to the city of Goose Creek? Yeah, you know, I, I think that I, I'm really encouraged to have a city where we can get more pedestrians out safely in our community. Granted, right now it's so hot that I don't know how many people could safely do that. But being able to cross from one side of the city all the way to the other side of the city, east to west, north to south, I would like to see that happen and so when you look at henry brown and and you know you're going up montague you know eventually we have plans to to get sidewalks connected from you know the henry brown side to the uh city hall and from city hall to the central creek park and from the central creek park down to you know farms and 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 so that would be an awesome thing some of these crosswalks currently aren't as safe as they should be uh, access across 52 isn't what it should be. Um, we still have some so-called goat pass in Goose Creek, uh, down 52, uh, down 76, which is just where people have walked without a sidewalk for a long time. So that's a, a goal of mine uh, for the safety of our residents, for the health of our residents. Um, as we know, the more active you are, the healthier you are, and the lower health care costs exist on the back end of that. And these things are good for our city, for our state, for our nation. So I think all these things start at a city level. And and we have done a good job to, to make some of those changes. And, you know, you mentioned uh, visiting Greenville recently. And, and there's someone I like to take ideas from because they've done an excellent job. And in that city, you can pretty much walk from one side of the city to the other. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. And not everyone may want to do that. But for those people who, who do, it adds quality of life. It adds mobility. It adds economic growth. Um, and so those things take money. They take time. They take partnership with county and state um, folks and, and an open mind to, to see those things. And even our trails that are, you know, near the Wanamaker Park Trail, uh, you know, connecting that down to, to St. James. Um, so anyways, I would really like to see those things happen uh, for the betterment of our city. And we have, made, we have made progress on that. And once those connect to all our 
recreation sites, um, I think we'll see more people out and about in Goose Creek, which adds some interest to what's going on in Goose Creek. And then this also adds to that, that demand. Um, and then hopefully we can uh, keep up with the supply. Absolutely. And, and, you know, what you just described just reminds me of my favorite city, which has, a, I mean, a really good bike path from one end of the gulch to the North Gulch, which is Nashville. So I just love that. Oh, but, let me, nice. but let me ask you this. <laughs> what line item will you put down in the budget for sidewalks? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we currently have over 100 miles of bike and sidewalk systems, uh, not including some of the privately maintained trails. And in, in our connectivity master plan, it lays out some of our goals for the future for um, that growth. And, and so some of it is, is South Carolina DOT builds some of them. We can work with the county for some of them. Sometimes the developers can help in the neighborhoods they, they build them. Uh, sometimes the city uh, can also put up funds for some of those things. So it's a combination of 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 money and, and funds and, and we've gotten grants at times before. So, um, so it, it's a combination and it takes partnership. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I think in due time, like we can connect all those. Goose Creek city councilman, Christopher Harmon. Thank you for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Pulse Ups. Thank you so much, Quentin. I've enjoyed it, man. And you really asked me some good questions and I look forward to next time. Likewise. I'll be here.